Kunasan Yokoso. Welcome to Astrophotography Japan. Today, as you can probably see, I'm not in Japan. I'm actually in Northern California and driving up this very dangerous winding road to the top of Fremont Peak uh, State Park. There's a observatory up here actually that my brother has reserved and we have a 30-inch Newtonian F5 scope that we're going to be doing some visual astronomy with tonight. So it's going to be a special treat for me since I've never really looked in a scope that large before. So welcome, thanks for joining me, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. The Fremont Peak Observatory sits atop some coastal mountains just south of the little town of San Juan Batista, California. It took a little over an hour to drive down here from San Jose. The road to the top of the mountain was winding and narrow, so concentration on driving is a definite safety requirement. The observatory is run by an association of volunteers from the San Fran and Monterey Bay areas. The association is a nonprofit educational organization of over 100 amateur astronomers. They offer frequent public outreach with a monthly viewing schedule and educational programs. The events are held from April through October. Take a look at their website for public outreach announcements. I also provided here a QR code for your convenience. The Fremont Peak area is about a Bordel Class IV territory, perhaps even a little darker. Being in coastal California and at over 800 meters in altitude, the sky quality is usually pretty amazing. So we just arrived and this is the uh, observatory here. Got at least uh, 15, 20 minutes before it gets dark. And that's, I guess, Fremont Peak, I guess, the top there. I was here on the night of April 20th from sundown to sunup. The observatory building has a fairly large indoor room for equipment storage, lectures, and for relaxing and warming up during cold nights. The telescope is housed under a retractable rooftop which slides open using a manual crank, revealing a large open sky area extending fairly low in all directions but not necessarily down to the horizon. However, I would estimate that 80 to 90 percent of the heavens are available for viewing. The main telescope at Fremont Peak is certainly one of the largest amateur scopes available to the public in astronomy anywhere. Its first light was only a few months after the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster which occurred on January 28, 1986. Hence the telescope was given the name Challenger in memorial to that mission. The telescope is a classic Newtonian design with a 30-inch mirror that weighs more than 250 pounds. Its focal length is 144 inches or more than 3.6 meters and coming in at a focal ratio of f4.8. The setup weighs almost 2,000 pounds or over 900 kilograms, yet it feels smooth and easy to move around by hand thanks to the design of its automatic tracking, English cross-axis, equatorial mount, and finely balanced weight distribution. The telescope is a one-of-a-kind, handmade, simple engineering design. It works well, is well-maintained, and has stood the test of time. I am grateful for the chance to use it without restriction. What a great opportunity. This night, I was escorted here by my elder brother, Phil, who is far more experienced in astronomy. He has formal education in the subject that includes a graduate degree from the University of Hawaii Institute for Astronomy, and he even worked with telescopes atop of Mauna Kea many years ago. 
Phil is currently an electrical and optical engineer at Apple headquarters in Cupertino, developing technologies for next-generation cameras for the iPhone and other products. He is a longtime Fremont Peak Observatory Association member and volunteer and has privileged access to the facilities here. Hence, he reserved the entire observatory exclusively for us on this night. One of his colleagues from Apple, a chip design engineer nicknamed Conch, met us there as well. Conch is originally from Sri Lanka and is an experienced member and volunteer with the San Jose Astronomical Association. In his younger years, through local programs, Conch had the distinct pleasure of meeting and gazing through telescopes with Arthur C. Clarke several times, who also lived in Sri Lanka during those years. Conch has keen eyes and a great skill at finding deep sky objects in the dark night. I was in good hands. As the sun was setting, we quickly got to work unlocking, unwrapping, and setting up the observatory for a full night of visual astronomy. That night, we had to contend with a nearly full moon, so the sky brightness conditions were not ideal, but my travel timing to California could not be helped. Nevertheless, we settled on a bunch of targets situated away from the bright moon that included nebulae, star clusters, and notable stars and available planets. There even happened to be a conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus on this night, located within 30 arc minutes of each other in the early evening sky. To save our eyesight, we planned to view the moon as the last object on which to turn the telescope after getting our fill of everything else.
As you can see, with a Newtonian telescope, we needed to elevate ourselves high off the ground by climbing a ladder to reach the focuser and eyepiece. I personally enjoyed the wide field views the best with the various 2 inch eyepieces that extended magnification ranges from 66x to almost 230 times. When gazing through the eyepieces, what surprised me the most was the clarity and brightness. I viewed many objects this night that are barely even visible in the Bordel Class 7 Plus light polluted skies around my home in Yokohama, Japan. See you, Conch! The most impressive target that made a lasting impression on me was the brightness and beauty of the M13 Hercules Globular Cluster. It was truly amazing to see the details and clarity of all the tiny bright little stars filling in the field of view. Truly beautiful. It visually looked like a high resolution glowing astrophotograph. So, uh, it's 3.30 in the morning, we're wrapping it up here. Uh, the moon's actually going to set pretty soon. Uh, this was the first time I've ever actually had a chance to look through a scope like this before. We saw over 20 celestial objects, including the moon, of course. And uh, it was really a lot of fun to sort of do this all manually. Uh, it takes time sometimes to find the objects, but uh, uh, this uh, tracking mount here was fantastic. I mean, once you got it on the object, it just stayed on that object. We were able to, to see a lot tonight, so. Um, no photography, just all visual astronomy, the old fashioned way. Thanks for joining. Late and just before dawn, and after exploring the moon, we decided to end the viewing session. The cleanup and cover up of all the equipment, telescope, and facilities was detailed and thorough. Having everything properly positioned and fixed into place before cranking closed and securing the rooftop was crucial. This was a night I will not soon forget. Having a chance to work with a telescope more powerful than any ever in my dreams, it was fantastic. I want to again thank the Fremont Peak Observatory Association for this opportunity. Even if you need to drive hours to get here, it is a worthwhile experience if you can join one of their public outreach viewing nights. I came across an ocean, and it was worth it. Also, let me express my appreciation again to Phil for making all the arrangements. I am lucky to have a brother who is also an expert supporting me for my YouTube channel and hobby obsession with astronomy and astrophotography. I am JP Astro Guy. My name is Paul Cheesegel, and you have been watching Astrophotography Japan. <laughs>